The River Mees is described as a typical lowland river in that it meanders across the landscape. It suffers from habitat modification and pollution. So as well as the physical structure of the river, it's failing for high levels of phosphate and for sedimentation. It was felt important to protect the river, so we're able to look at rivers of this type and find ways to improve and protect their condition. What the Mies means to me is something that sort of meanders through my landscape. Uh, I feel very, very attached to it. It's very important that people understand that the River Mies is an important river. It's got the highest designation in the UK. No single sector or organisation can transform a river alone. In the end, is it really in anybody's interest to allow really good quality, nutrient-rich soil to run off land into a river and harm the river? But it's changing hearts and minds. So we at the Trent Rivers Trust, along with a whole range of different partners, are ultimately trying to get the Mees into a good conservation status. We've come a long, long way and we have got some really good examples of projects that have been delivered. The river is a living thing. that It's going to change and it's going to evolve. For us, it needs to evolve while we're still working at the side of it. The River Mees is a small lowland river flowing from the East Midlands towards the River Trent. There are quite a few key tributaries. The catchment of the River Mees is largely a rural catchment. It's got an awful lot of farming across the landscape. Um, it does have some towns in it, Ashby does Azush and then Meesham. But on the whole, there's very much a farming landscape. I'm James Starton. Uh, we farm here in Croxall against the lower reaches of the River Mees. We're arable farmers. Family's been here since 1950, so 70 odd years. I've lived here all my life. I think most people see the River Mees as, as being an idyllic little stream that meanders through lowland countryside, I suppose. Which in the summer it is. But in the winter it's a beast of a thing when it's full of water. It's gathering water off a big area. And, it, and in places it can be hundreds of metres wide instead of perhaps four or five metres wide when it's, when it's at its lowest level. The river for us is a drainage channel. I, I, I understand that the, the, a consequence of that is the habitat of the river. For some people the habitat is the most important thing, for other people the drainage is the most important thing. We need, we need a compromise of both. Well, the Meath was designated in 2005 originally as a, a site of special scientific interest that then led on to a European designation under the Habitats Directive as a, a special area of conservation. The original designation was for primarily a small fish, a spined loach. The other species uh, include white-clawed crayfish, the otter and uh, water crowfoot. So the river is designated as a triple SI, but it's actually classified as unfavourable condition, no change. Money has been made available to actually carry out habitat improvement works on the river and to trap pollution, and a lot of that work is now underway. There's a number of things that we're trying to achieve. First of all, the structural uh, dynamic nature of, um, of how the river looks, and secondly, get the phosphate and the sediment out of the river uh, onto the floodplain. So in the early days of the designation, we had lots of meetings, farmer meetings with the Environment Agency and Natural England, and all we were told was that we couldn't do anything. Probably fair to say that a lot of the organisations that were involved in the Mees early on had not really worked in a partnership trying to enhance the river's condition before. And I think many of the landowners were uncertain what was in it for them. They felt there was a risk to their business livelihoods. So I think the big changes over the last 10 years is recognising something we refer to as the catchment-based approach. That's an initiative that's being rolled out nationally and there's an increasing recognition from DEFRA that in order to get a river into good status, you need to look after 
the catchment as well as the river and the riparian land and the floodplain along the river. In 2018 we started to talk to the Trent Rivers Trust about setting up a partnership with them on doing these restoration projects, working with landowners, stakeholders and other partners uh, in order to move the, the, the River Mees to uh, what we're looking for, which is a, a more uh, favourable or good condition under the designation. Trent Rivers Trust has been hosting the catchment based approach where we um, we literally get people in a room all all these people have got an interest in the river and start talking to each other and ultimately it's about getting people to understand what other people's issues are I, I think since Trent Rivers Trust have got involved they've they've listened to the the wants and needs of all the various different stakeholders, so the farmers, the Environment Agency, Natural England, and they've managed to put together a plan that brings in the interest of everybody, and more of a compromise. Working with the farming community is incredibly important. They are the managers of this land. It's, um, it's their... It's their land, it's their home. They've been here a long time. We can't just come in and, and start telling them to do things differently. We want to work with them every step of the way. And if we can work with them to modify any practices or modify um, any areas of the river, you know, for, for the purpose of, of biodiversity and habitat improvement, ultimately everyone's benefiting. I can see what they're trying to achieve. And I, and I think they can now see what we're trying to achieve as well. Hopefully, hopefully that will work. We are going to put some environmental schemes on, on our fields adjacent to the river. So we will have some, some grass strips near to the river, which is sort of more what, what they want anyway. So we have over the recent years been able to invest in both the habitat and the water quality on the river. In particular, habitat wise, there have been quite a lot of river restoration projects undertaken. We create features in the channel and those features provide habitat, um, habitat for invertebrates and fish. Now you'll have deep areas and shallow areas, deposition areas, riffles, which is where the gravel settles out, and pools. So creating a whole range of different flow types and channel features on the bed. So the reason we do these is to try to stimulate the river to heal itself. So if we put some of these natural processes in and to start to encourage a bigger variation of flow types, the river will then do that more. Well, in a lot of rivers, and the River Mees is a very good case of this, it's been uh, dredged in the past and over -deepened. So what we're trying to do is reprofile and get that connection with the river and the, uh, the bank again and the floodplain. So if we can grade the banks into the river, it's great for habitat and for different species. Some of the work that's been done here, th this was a very steep-sided bank. The top of the bank was in a similar place to where the bottom is now. It was sort of vertical on this bend. And in taking off this inside bank of the, of the bend, there's, uh, there's a massive amount more volume able to get around this corner. I think it should make a big difference. That's quite a, quite a massive difference in volume. We must have nearly doubled the volume that can get round this corner. Well, when the river rises, then it spills out of its confined channel into the, uh, this sort of floodplain that we've created for it. So you get a lot more uh, storage. So it just slows the flow down. And then suspended sediment gets caught up and drops out. So you've got water quality benefits as well. This is a really good example of um, the sedimentation that happens when the water is slowly receding on one of these reprofiled, better graded banks after flood water. So we've got a bit of gravel deposition, but here we've got a really a good mound of, um, of sediment that's been deposited. So all of this has come from the river, which is now establishing vegetation on the bank rather than being in the river and uh, adding more phosphate. So in the past, a lot of the natural features would have been removed from the river, so trees that have fallen in or woody material. We have actually put some of that material back in and we've staked it in so it won't move. That woody material is really valuable as habitat in its own right. You get areas of sediment collecting, but then you get scouring and covering gravels. So it's quite a vital habitat to have in a river. Here we've got some wood here being planted in the 
in the bank or secured into the bank of the river and then going into the water. So that's giving an area of shade, a bit of shade, and it also uh, serves to alter the angle of the flow slightly. So there's a piece here that's directing the flow towards the far bank and a little bit further down you can see there's a piece in the far bank that's directing the water back over to this side again. One of the other techniques we're using is introducing gravel along certain reaches. The two big benefits of gravel is that it reduces the depth of the river. In the past it would have been over deepened so the bits that have now got gravel in are shallower but it also creates diversity on the bed itself. We might put gravel in a particular place and it'll get washed downstream and it'll deposit in a much more natural way. Um, gravels are important for as breeding habitat for fish, um, particularly for the spine loach and bullhead that this river is designated as a triple SI and a SAC for. They're also really important for flow dynamics. They oxygenate the water by the way that the, the river flows over it. It disperses sediment around it. They also are important for establishing water crowfoot and water crowfoot is one of the species that also that the river is designated for. The other big part of the intervention is about water quality. So we are working with landowners to trap pollution before it gets to the river. Look, this is the, uh, the confluence between the Gilwisker Brook, which is the river to the north, and the Upper Mees here, and then the join at the confluence and it becomes River Mees. And this whole site is about 1.7 hectares and the farmer actually approached us because it just wasn't viable to farm with modern machinery. So on this, because we've got issues with you know, high sediment loading, we're gonna actually break out the river and it's going to come into a series of channels. So it's going to be sort of a braided river system. So as the rivers rise, water will overspill into these various watercourses. So it's going to give us a really rich, varied you know, environment. So now this is being funded by the uh, DCS, the D Developer Contribution Scheme. So the idea is to reduce phosphates. So I mean, the upper Mees has quite a high sediment loading. So if we can get that at higher flows to go into this wetland area and then it can deposit its sediment there, so we're going to really reduce the you know, sediment loading in the river. The elements of, um, of the river that we're most concerned about, it's failing for high levels of phosphate and for sedimentation. And this uh, phosphate and sediment comes in from uh, sources either through urban development uh, from roads and from agricultural land use. And there's an initiative called Catchment Sensitive Farming which is run by Natural England and they work directly with farmers on their land holdings and on their farmyards. So there's a big emphasis on trapping the pollution before it gets anywhere close to the river. So one of the reasons why uh, South Derbyshire gets involved with trying to improve the condition of the Mees is because it's designated as a special area of conservation and the work that we do uh, in terms of looking at planning applications means that we could have an impact on the, the special area of conservation unless we took care. That can be about surface water, it can be about um, increases in water pollution as a result of point sources, for example, foul water flows into the sewers, etc. Then that can quickly be a very significant influence on the river. Only if there's a pathway from the development to the river is there a problem for the ecology. And most of the, most of the development isn't anywhere near the river, but it might be near a tributary of the river. So. Straight away, I mean, I, I'm a planner, but I'm not thinking about ecology, I'm thinking about drainage, and I think this is one of the fundamental problems. You need all sorts of different skills to understand how development or other actions could affect the river. So we are working to mitigate the impact of development in the catchment, so that means trapping pollution. So we have actually been involved in retrofitting a couple of sustainable urban drainage schemes. So we're on a residential street in Meesham here, so it's one of our more urban um, projects, this one. Here we're looking at road pollutants, so some of those would be taken up in, in sediments from the road, which would come down in the water. So what we've done here is a suds system. So 
normally your road drainage would fall into a gully pot the gully pot joins the main drainage network which can often be overwhelmed in really heavy flows so what we've done here is taken the gully pots out of the road so instead of water going down into the gully pot it goes under and through this channel here and we've had it the water directed towards a swale where the water can soak away into the earth naturally and then higher flows that there's a great directing water into a pool that's underground the water then that joins the river is much cleaner sediments and pollutants have settled out and then in the pools and also in the swales they've been planted up with a wildflower mix um, which are species that are adapted to being wetter for longer as well in these sorts of features um, and the wildflowers are obviously beneficial for all sorts of insects and, uh, and other species as well. So this is the final point of our sud system the sediment's been removed and so the water's a lot cleaner than it would have been if it hadn't gone through the suds process. So that we can target our work properly, we are collecting data about the background phosphate levels across the whole catchment, which includes going around all the various tributaries, taking water samples and measuring them for phosphate. Uh, today we're doing some water quality sampling on four tributaries of the River Mees. Uh, we're looking at the total phosphate and the reactive phosphate in the water sample. At the moment that figure is too high and what can happen when the phosphate levels are too high. Plants like water crowfoot, the, these important river species, it's not tolerant to high levels of phosphate so it's suffering and too much phosphate in the water can cause more algal blooms as well which means that there's less oxygen getting into the water which is damaging again to the plant species and to fish species as well. We're working with some really good, really engaged landowners who we've been working with really well and we're continuing to get other landowners and farmers engaged in the work that we're doing. We take the approach that the farmer is involved right from the offset. We want them to be involved in the design. We talk to them about their experience of, river, of the river going through their land. They have a lot of knowledge, you know, in terms of how the river behaves, the habitats that are there, the habitats that have been there historically that aren't there anymore. I'm uh, the tenant of about 25 acres here, bounding uh, the River Meath. Uh, I was born in uh, Edingale uh, and I'm a parish council here. I feel very sort of connected uh, to the place. So uh, Emma from uh, Trent Rivers Trust uh, has visited today to continue a conversation uh, that she and I have been having around works uh, around the river. We plan to do uh, various uh, scrapes, bank enhancements, new planting with a view to enhancing water quality hopefully over time uh, and uh, uh, looking after those tiny creatures in the river that uh, folks are so worried about at the minute. It's nearly all farmers who have lived around the Mies, probably like me, were born close to it and that are now starting to think uh, about how to farm around the Mies, uh, what we can do to better improve the Mies. I think we're learning about the river all the time and, and with what we've been through the last few years, yes, we're learning a lot more about the river. Um, we're learning more about what other people would like the river, how, how other people would see, like to see the river. But hopefully we're coming to a compromise that it works for us too. We're now asking landowners to take on at a point where, you know, life's difficult for the farming industry. So it's a real challenge. And I think by and large, we're making real tangible pro progress. So I do believe the debate has shifted over time, but I think we're a bit like a piece of litmus paper. We're gradually changing the colour of the paper uh, over time nowadays. I think in terms of understanding uh, why the river is being managed as it is and why things are being asked of them as they are. So I think that is moving. So we are working with a range of different groups and organisations to monitor what we're doing. Um, after all this work has been completed and all the work that's planned, we will expect to see change in the conservation status. Ultimately, we're after a river that's in good condition, that floods in the right places, that supports a range of wetland habitats and species within a diverse agricultural landscape and where farmers recognise 
the value of protecting habitats and improving water quality, whilst also managing to sustain their farming businesses. So years ago, we'd have come down here now and we'd have seen fish swimming around. The idea is that the quality of the water is getting better for the fish, there's less phosphates in there, so hopefully that'll get the fish stocks building back up again. Mm -hmm.